He needs a knockout. Wilder can't beat me on points. Not possible. When someone stands up to Deontay Wilder, he fold. I'm about to have the biggest fight in the last 30 years. Let's get it on. Tyson, you're getting used to Las Vegas now, but this is a much bigger challenge than the previous two fights. Tell me how you're feeling, what the general mood in the camp has been. I'm feeling fantastic. The general mood in the camp has been excellent. Um, I don't believe we've had any problems or any mishaps in, in training all the way through. Um, and we've had a smooth camp, really. Everything's going as it should do. Um, we're, all, we're already ready to go, as you'd expect, with a week left. Just unwinding now and uh, taking it easy and um, enjoying the, the build-up for the fight, big fight. And the presence of Sugar Hill Stewart in your camp evokes memories of Emmanuel Stewart and the time you spent with him the best part of a decade ago. What sort of influence did he have on you as a, as a person and as a boxer? He was a great trainer. I only spent a few weeks with him over there, um, a couple of weeks with him in um, Austria and then a few days with him in Canada. But yeah, we had a uh, we had, we hit it off as a good relationship, and he he, uh, he told me a lot about boxing within a short period of time. Was there ever a chance that you would link up with him, or did his links with Vladimir Klitschko prevent? It, it wasn't the fact of Vladimir Klitschko that uh, why why I didn't go back training with him. The fact that was he was tra traveling all over the world, and I I was a young professional with a young family at home to feed. And I couldn't come and train in America and fight in America when I had my kids at home. You know, I just had my daughter Venezuela at that time in 2009, 2010. And I had to be at home. It was all right to go there and have a look at it and see what it was about. But it was never going to um, last. And with him annually, he was never in one place. He would be in Germany, he'd be in Austria, he'd be all over the shop. Back to HBO commentary. So it was, it was a tough, uh, tough gig to follow him around. And you wore a pair of boots that he gave you for the first world title fight against Vladimir Klitschko. That's right. He gave me a set of Mizuno boots from the 1980s that were brand new out of his loft. Um, and I wore them for most of my big fights. Um, I wore them for the Klitschko win. But after that win, I retired them because they were in bits, basically. I had them for years, since 2010. And I wore them for me training and the sparring and everything. So they was uh, great boots. Never could get them again, actually. Until, until... Sugar Hill bought me a brand new pair from his house, um, but the size 14 is too big, so I can't wear them, <laughs> which is unlucky. So now the steward links have been renewed. What have the early stages been like? Does it feel like you've been together longer than you have? We've had seven, eight weeks together, just under eight weeks, seven weeks and five days together, every day, training twice a day. Um, and even when we're not training, we're still in the house together. So, yeah, it's been good. Sure, Gill's a good bloke. And he's a, uh, he's a good trainer, very good trainer. He knows what he's doing. He knows not to overtrain me and do too much. He knows when to put the foot down. He knows when to ease back. Um, and that, that's a very good, very important uh, thing to have in a trainer. A man who knows when to push and when not to push. Emmanuel Stewart was very complimentary, not just about you, but around that time also about Deontay Wilder, telling you to look out for this young American fella, so not a bad judge. Not a bad judge. He, he picked two young kids out back in that, that day. In 2010, I think I was about 21 or something, both about the same age. Well, he was a bit older than me, while he'd been about 20, 24 uh, or 5. And he picked us out of everybody in the world at that stage and said that we'd both be uh, world champions. But I'd be the dominant heavyweight after, after Vladimir Klitschko. So, yeah, he said he'd be a world champion, but he didn't say he'd be a dominant heavyweight. So now it's time of world championship reign is over because he's meeting the dominant heavyweight of his era, not you know, being me. Stewart says that about Deontay Wilder, and yet there's criticism of his technical ability to the point where sometimes it's ridiculed. You've stood in front of him. How good is he technically? Technically, not so great. You know, Vladimir Klitschko would lose and find him in boxing ability. But... His power is very good, he's got good power and he's got good speed. And he'll throw punches from very novice angles that usually a world champion or a high level professional wouldn't wouldn't throw. So yeah, they come from the floor sometimes and round corners and stuff. So you've got to be on your wits about you. And he puts himself in very vulnerable positions by throwing these shots where a more polished professional wouldn't type of thing. Did that take you by surprise? I'll tell you what it's like After doing. you'd watched him. Fighting Deontay Wilder is like giving a seven-year-old an AK-47. 
in a room, fully loaded. <laughs> I was going to say. Yeah, that's what it's like. <laughs> so yeah, you got to be uh, on your wits, that's for sure. Very easy c to control certain points. When he gets to another point, he could just let rip at any time. Do you think that's him, or do you believe he can do anything differently this time? I don't believe he's going to do much different, to be honest. I don't think he needs to do much different. He's worked 43 times in a row for him. So, yeah, he'll be, he'll be looking to land his jab a bit more and set the right hand up a bit more this time. I think he's going to try and slow. He, he, I, th I think, personally, he'll come out the gates like a gallop on horse, quarter mile, flat out to try and knock me out in the first round. But after that goes, he'll, uh, he'll start relaxing more and he get back to try and use his jab and set the right hand up. You've said to me in the past that you try to do what your opponent doesn't want. If he wants to box, you fight. If he wants to fight, you box. And yet you've spoken in Los Angeles and elsewhere about wanting to, to knock him out, yeah. which is running counter to that kind of philosophy, meeting fire with fire. That's right. Of, and there's an old saying, to knock out a knockout artist, you've got to back them up, make them go back. Because Wilder's used to coming forward his whole career, knocking people out. He's never knocked anyone out on the back foot ever. So he, his momentum is forward. So all bullies, when they're backed up and stood up to, fold. And Wilder's no different to any other bully, a playground bully. When someone stands up to Deontay Wilder, he fold. And I'm going to prove it on Saturday night. Any issues with the cut that needed more than 40 stitches last time out? Not in training camp. So far, so good. It's still, still sailed together quite well. Um, and I don't think it's got to be an issue. And if it is, I'm prepared because I brought in uh, the best cutman in the world for it, Stitch Duran. And I'm sure he's capable of um, getting me through any cut situation. But I don't think this is going to be a cut, cut fight. You know, uh, it won't be a stone in the road. It's not going to alter the victory of, of either fight here. This time around, you've spoken about not relying on the judges. But if it does go long enough, do you think that what happened in Los Angeles might actually work in your favour? Yeah, listen, will... if it goes 12 rounds, I've won. He needs a knockout. I can have a knockout or a points victory. Wilder can't beat me on points. Not possible. Um, so, yeah, if it goes the distance, I'm a clear winner, for sure. And this is Las Vegas. This isn't Los Angeles. They like a boxer in this town. As we've seen, one of the greatest boxers that's ever lived has, been, has come from this town. So they can appreciate a master boxer here. And that's why we're in Las Vegas. Yeah. He made it his town, didn't he? Floyd he Mayweather, did. Yeah. That stick and move slick style works. And the judges here in Nevada, they like that. So, yeah. And we spoke about this being your third appearance here in Vegas. First time around, you said that you didn't want to come here at all until you were ready to fight and top the bill. Now it's a monster occasion. So yes. how, how is this getting you giddy? You know, it's, it's a boxing match to me. I'm not going to dress it up because I don't want to dress it up in my mind. I could say, I could make myself believe it, but all the things that it is, I can tell them something to me and get all riled up about it, but I don't want to do that. Can you do that 24 hours a day? Can you, can you keep the, the I, I can down? do it. I can keep, the, keep it down. 24 hours a day until on the day, on fight day. And then, then when I'm walking to the ring, then I realise that, oh, I'm about to have the biggest fight in the last 30 years or more since 1971. So let's get it on. But you need, Listen, that, you need that kind of nerves, don't you? You do need a bit of nerves going into these big fights. Um, it's healthy. It's healthy. And on the night, hopefully, I'll, I'll, have, a few, uh, I'll have a few nerves and stuff. And just to finish, Tyson, I was talking to Josh Warrington last week and he was saying that he'd just had his 11th annual medical. And then he, he kind of joked, kind of an aside, he said that's a long time to be getting smacked about the head and, and then went on to say he's into the last phase of his career. Is, is that where you are? I'm on my 12th medical. So, yeah, I've had plenty more smacks than him, that's for <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, for sure. It's, uh, I'm in the later end of my career, 31-year-old. Um, three more fights, whether it takes a year or 18 months. The Gypsy King will be no more within two years, that's for sure. Thanks for your time. We wish you well. Thank you.